Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts, the fastest growing gear site on the web. And today we're gonna uncreate the HJC i91. What's up, Speed Axe fan? Before we jump in and tell you about HJC's latest modular helmet, do us both a favor. Subscribe to that Speed Addicts channel. It takes a click, I'll wait for you. Then you're gonna be up to date. You're gonna be educated and making excellent buying decisions on all the coolest and latest gear, parts, you name it for power sports, we're gonna help you make good buying decisions. Also, if you'd like to support us here at speedaddicts.com, you can do so by simply shopping with us. There'll be a link in the description below. They'll take you to the complete selection of HJC i91 helmets, where you can shop, free exchanges, make it super easy over here at Speed Addicts, and we do appreciate your support. Okay, HJC, one of the leaders in the industry for many decades now. If you've been riding for more than about two seconds, you've seen one of these logos floating around on the street. So dollar for dollar, HJC known as a high quality producer and a good value. They're a Korean company and their modular helmets have always done very well. Now, what you'll notice when you're shopping for HJC modulars is you're gonna see a much more expensive version of this helmet uh, under their ARFA line, which is kind of their higher end line. It's gonna be the ARFA 91. Then you're gonna see the HJC i91. Now, they share some of the same features. The main difference though is that the i91 is a polycarbonate shell, which allows HJC to keep the price down. When you move up to their PIM shell or their composite shell, a lot more hours go into those helmets and drives up the price. Now, I think most riders would be perfectly happy in this polycarbonate i91, and they're gonna save about 300 bucks because these start at 249 and go to 294, whereas the Arfa Series 91 is going to run you an eye-watering $550, an extra $100 if you creep into their graphics, okay? So solids are usually cheaper than the graphics. So we're gonna talk about the Arfa, or sorry, the I, HAC i91 today. Another difference with the Arfa line is they give you two extra years of warranty, five instead of three here, but really I think a lot of you are really gonna enjoy this helmet. So polycarbonate shell that weighs three pounds, 13 ounces or 1,720 grams for the DOT version sold here in the United States. Like I said, it is modular in case you were wondering, yes, the chin bar comes up. That's kind of the whole point here. And we have that drop down sun visor. Now, the best thing about this modular helmet, if you have a big head, is that they're making three shell sizes. More shell sizes, especially with modular helmets, really drives the, the price up for the producer. Okay, they have to make more molds for all the different parts of modular helmet. So um, a lot of producers will only go with two shell sizes in their modular helmets, which means if you have like an extra large or two extra, um, an extra large or two extra large sizing like I do, I have a bigger head and a bigger chin, I can't fit into a lot of modular helmets. They just hit me awkward and they don't fit. Not the case here. So this helmet has an excellent fit. I don't get any of that chin bar kind of drag as I'm trying to pull it down on my face. It's a perfect intermediate oval head shape with lots of ear room. It holds my face snugly without push, uh, pushing my cheeks in. Really, really love the fit. Now this is part of the HJC's new lineup. They've basically refreshed their entire lineup over the last couple of years and I think they got the fit really dialed in now. Now you're gonna see, si oh, <clears throat> there we go. You don't have to press the button to lower the chin bar. Uh, you're gonna see sizes extra small through two extra large. And I think it runs extremely true. I can usually fit into an extra large and no surprises here, I can. And I'm about a 24 inch head circumference. So again, pretty big head. And it's nice that they have that two X as well. So it should fit most of you out there. Now, when we're talking about fit, we're talking about shopping for helmets online. It's nice to know if it doesn't work out, am I gonna be taken care of? Well, if you shop at Speed Addicts, you most certainly will. We're even gonna give you a free return label. So you can get a different size, a different color, or just your money back if you decide the helmet is not for you when you shop at Speed Addicts. We're gonna treat you like family and make it real easy to get that free return label, live in the lower 48 states, and make sure you take care of the merchandise, new, uh, original, bags and tags, all that sort of stuff. Make sure it comes back in good shape so that we can uh, offer you that service. Okay, oh, try it on your living room. That's the tip, don't take it outside. Back to the helmet here. We always start with ventilation. No difference here. The design, modern, updated over the um, <clears throat> predecessor, which is the i90, okay? The i90 was getting a little long in the tooth. This one's definitely updated. We see a lot of the cues from the Arfa series coming in here, these modern lines. 
and uh, really clean vents. They did a good job. I like big, these big paddle vents like this, very easy to find. No matter where you're reaching with gloves on, you just slide that whole front down and you get a nice big coin slot here to get plenty of airflow through the chin bar. And the same is true up in the crown of the helmet, another big paddle vent, easy to work no matter where you're reaching. It's hard to miss this, and it is going to go through a channeled imported EPS system to keep you nice and cool. Temperature's still too hot. If you are game, you can ride with the chin bar up. Now, you're not gonna get the same sort of protection, and technically it's not recommended, but some people like to do that when they're going through town. Lower speeds, get some air flow going between lights. Whatever you're doing at the gas station is kind of the whole point of the lift up chin bar. Now you'll notice there's no lockout here. <clears throat> so if you go hit a bump, this thing could come down on you. Some, some of the newer helmets are coming out with a locking system that is missing here on the HAC uh, I-91. But the detent is pretty firm. You saw me struggle with it earlier, so I don't think it should be going anywhere. Let's talk about the face shields here. <clears throat> there's a lot to like about this helmet. And the thing I like about it most is the fit. One of the things I don't like as much is the face shield is just not very taut. We don't get any good detents. This thing wants to slide up and down. So if you expect you're gonna ride around with it cracked, maybe right there is about it. Everywhere else it kind of wants to move around. Up at the top, it is a little loose as well, but it should hold. So that's kind of one place where it's worth the extra money or maybe worth a lot of extra money to go to that Arfa series. That's one of the things you're gonna get is a face shield system that's a little bit better and has a real true locking system down on the um, bottom of the eye port. Now, not a deal breaker. The changes are relatively simple. If you wanna get a different shield, you're just gonna pull down that little trigger there when it's in the up position and it drops back into place very nicely. So uh, again, not a game changer, but something I could, I could see being improved. Now, they are going to include for $250 in the solid colors, you're gonna get a pin lock insert. So that's a nice value there. In case you're not familiar, this installs on the inside of the face shield, making it a dual pane system and reducing or mitigating fog. And while we're talking about fog, I did notice this seems to be treated because when I had it on and I was trying to fog it up in here as I do, uh, it was trying to fight back the fog, the standard exterior shield here. So the pin lock insert, is the next level. You know, if you live somewhere where it gets misty or foggy out and you get condensation, then go with that pin lock. Now, the interior shield on the other hand is one of the best we've seen and it's essentially the same system that they have in that ARFA 91. And you'll notice the first thing, see how tight this margin is right here? This thing goes almost completely down, which is awesome. Most drop down interior sun visors suck and they hit you right here and you get light flooding in from the bottom or they're in the middle of your vision and they just are poorly designed. Not here, we're going all the way down. Even better, if you remove this cover here, and I'll try to do it on the fly. So <clears throat> this is part of the comm system package. And uh, let's see if I can remove this very quickly without breaking something. So the comm system, integrated comm system option, the smart system plugs into these doors, but under the left side, if I can get this to go, is a control to adjust that interior sun visor. Whoop, there it is. Okay, so if you go with the, the 21B or the 50B integrated solutions that I'm gonna to talk to you about in a minute when it comes to Bluetooth comms, you're gonna plug in here. But the other thing you get to do over here on the left side is adjust this three position switch. And how you adjust that will change how far and how far out this interior sun visor goes. Right now it's at the bottom position, which means it's going to go down as far as it can and out as far as it can. It has two steps above that. So <clears throat> if your nose is making contact, then you can bring it up and it won't hit you. Otherwise you want it to go all the way down and get that maximum sun coverage. Okay, that's cool. I don't know of any other helmet on the market allowing you to adjust the height of that sun visor, which makes this helmet special. Whoops. Let's put this back into place. Okay, the chin bar lift itself is a quality button. This doesn't feel chintzy, it's going to last. We have uh, meta, uh, metal latches and stuff. Chin bar curtain is included, it's a micro suede, you can remove it, it's just some Velcro up in there. Let's get to the bottom of the helmet. 
and show you what's working uh, on the inside. Actually, before we do that, we do have video on their new smart system. So it's made by Senna. They have the 10 or the 21B and the 50B that are compatible. You'll know the helmets that are compatible with those new generations of smart systems because they have these big doors on each side of the helmet, okay? Will your older smart systems work? The original 10B and 20B, no, they will not work with this helmet. You must have the new generation 21B or 50 series, okay? Again, made by Senna, the 50 series will give you that mesh. The 21 is still a great comm system, but it doesn't have mesh. We have videos on those. You can watch those. We'll put the links in the description. And it's a polarizing subject because some people like that it's integrated, it's smooth, it is dialed in. They have a battery pack spot in the back here. So it's very nice if you go with that HTC smart system. But if you have an existing Cardo Edge or Pack Talk or whatever that you want to run on this, well, it's going to be very difficult. Sure, you can commandeer the speakers on the inside. We got to mount that unit kind of way back here so it's suboptimal. Okay, you can do it, but it's not great. You'd probably be better off just selling that, that old one you have or the existing one you have and maybe going with the HAC uh, Smart System by Senna. Okay, that's your comms discussion. Let's look at the bottom of the helmet. We have a double D ring closure, as you might expect. They're deciding not to go with the quick release. Okay, we can go with that. You'll notice they did a good job designing the bottom of the helmet because we have the noise dampening material here. See this extra little flap of material here as long uh, as well as the noise isolators that are coming out on the chin strap that's gonna make it seal underneath your chin better and keep the noise coming up from the bike out of your ears. This is how you make a quiet helmet. We have multiple different stitching panels. This extra time makes it premium. Let's go ahead and remove the moisture wicking antimicrobial liner. Yes. It is antimicrobial and washable, so it shouldn't stink, but if it does, it's time to take it out and wash it, would you? There are different cheap pad options if you need to fine tune, and uh, nice kind of microfiber interior. It's a good place to be. The best part is really the fit, though, uh, which is hard to convey through a video, but take my word for it. I've tried on virtually every helmet on the market, and this fit is awesome. Okay, come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Oh, there we go. Okay, there it is. Here's that chin curtain I mentioned. You can run it with or without. Again, this is set up for the HEC Smart System. You got speaker pockets, you got the boom mic set up. It all clips in quite nicely. And then you have this rear spot. Let's pull out the comfort liner. Whoops, for the coup de gras. And remember, HJC offers a three-year warranty with all the HJC line. If you spend that extra money and go to the RFA, they're going to give you two more years of warranty, which only seems like the right thing to do. We have the laser cut and sealed seams here. Nicely designed liner that is comfortable. No snaps up here in the temples, just that brow insert, and then two snaps in the back. Very clean and tidy black EPS that is channeled and ported. And I have to say just the precision and the finish on this uh, EPS is just that. It's just very tidy and just very well put together. Helmet from HJC who's been doing it on a big scale for a long time. It is the HJC I-91. I keep trying to press that button when I put it back together. There it is. Com system ready, polycarbonate shell, DOT ready. Great fitting helmet under $300. Check it out at speedaddicts.com. If you have more questions about this helmet or anything else we sell, we have text, we have rider support ready for you. Or the phone emails or live chats, go over to speedaddicts, start the conversation. That's all I got for you today. We'll see you next time to find out what's in the crate.